In this video, my girlfriend Lily and I attempt to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft without ever sleeping. That is over 33 real life hours in game. And if either of us dies, the world gets deleted. GG, game over. As you guys can probably tell, this video took a hot minute to put together. So if you guys do enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you guys could smash the like button and click subscribe if you guys are new. And without further ado, day one. We actually got a solid spawn on the edge of a spruce biome and a plains biome with a pretty cool archway there, which I kind of want to build into. But first priority, we need a bunch of wood and food so we can be underground before nighttime when all the mobs come out. Slap this chicken. In my search, I even managed to find a pillager outpost already, but I definitely don't want that smoke on day one. While Cody got the snacks, I chopped down a heap of trees and built a little mining shack. By night, we started tunneling down to diamond level, which is when we found our first pieces of iron. I used that to upgrade our tools and make a shield each, which is when we found our first creeper. Definitely a little sketch, but those new shields came in handy and we continued tunneling down. After setting up some chests and some furnaces, we got to work collecting all the essentials. Coal and iron were first, of course, so we used that to craft our first two sets of iron armor. I instantly felt a lot safer. Iron's cool and all, but I wanted diamonds, so day two we stayed underground collecting more resources until I managed to find the first diamonds. There was even six of them. It took me a little bit longer, but late into night two, I found my first diamonds as well, which was super lucky, even if mine was surrounded by lava. But I got rid of that and picked up my first diamonds. Eventually, I crafted them into my shiny new sword and pickaxe and headed for the surface again. My plan was originally to tackle the nearby pillager outpost I found until I noticed there's literally a village right next to spawn. I don't know how I missed that on day one, but turns out it has two blacksmiths, aka two of those loot chests. The first one had a saddle. The second one had iron horse armor. I honestly can't believe my luck at this point, but I'm definitely not complaining. So I eventually made my new mate Steve, our best friend, put on the saddle, chucked on the iron horse armor, and went off on our first adventure to go tackle that pillager outpost. Surprisingly, it was super easy to get in this place. I thought it'd be difficult, it was up on a cliff face, it looked well fortified, but I walked right in the front door, stole all of their mediocre loot to be honest, without taking a single shot, which was great. When I was up there as well, I noticed these guys have the audacity to be spying on two different villages at the same time. I noticed some campfires off in the distance, pretty close to spawn as well. So that's a second village super close that we can go check out and loot. Parkour! Parkour! Ah! I got shot in the butt. Oh, there you are. Steve! Get me out of here! We were out of daylight hours, so I retreated back downstairs to the mine, where I managed to find even more diamonds, of course surrounded by lava but that's fine collected all those up plus a few extra resources before heading back upstairs at daybreak on day four cody and i went off to explore the new village and somehow i managed to find myself a saddle and it's only day four that's also when i met my best friend hank the stallion and built him a temporary pen so he wouldn't go running off while we went hunting for more diamonds now if you thought we'd been getting pretty lucky so far, honestly I'd have to agree with you, but this is where it got a little crazy. Over the next two days and nights we tunneled everywhere and I just kept finding more and more diamonds. I upgraded to a shiny blue chest plate and pants, then only a few minutes later I had enough to upgrade to a full set of diamond armor. Now at this stage it was still night time so I thought why not I'll check a little bit further. I probably have enough diamonds but you can never have too many diamonds. And sure enough, I checked a little bit further from where I currently was and I found even more diamonds to add to my stash. I'm pretty sure I walked out of that mine with nine diamonds to spare with full diamond tools and armor. I don't want that smoke. I take the rest of you, but I just don't want that banner right there. Actually, good if we have a cow. I definitely don't want the raid starting. That was so perfect. The guy that had the banner got shot by his own dude. Perfect. That couldn't have gone any better if we tried. Now we have diamond armor. I'm feeling a little bit more confident. I'm going to head off in this direction with our boy Steve because I want more loot. I definitely want some dark oak so we can start building a house because it is now day seven. The morning of. Well, actually, it's midday. That's a vibe. While Cody was out, I started making our very first wheat farm right next to Hank's pen. Then once I had enough wheat, I lured a couple cows back into their pen and encouraged them to make a baby. The first of many babies. I didn't find anything notable on day seven, but by night we had our first ever run-in with phantoms. From now on, these little demons will be pestering us every single night in greater and greater numbers because we're never sleeping in this world, so more and more will just spawn each night. For now, they're pretty easy to deal with, so I got rid of them, and I finally started finding some decent loot on this adventure. I found an abandoned village, a couple buried treasure chests, a giant nether portal, and a shipwreck before eventually making it back to Lily by day 10. Dude, what a successful trip. We got bulk steaks, we got a bunch of leather for making books, almost two stacks of sugarcane. That means an enchantment table ASAP. 
Before we start enchanting though, I feel like a starter house is definitely well overdue. It's day 10, so I'm going to get to work on our first ever house. I decided not to go too overboard with the starter house, just something simple with the things we need, like our new enchantment table, which, by the way, first bow enchant has infinity on it. Was very happy about that. But yeah, keeping it simple, I have an overall idea for the area, but it's going to cost a lot more resources. So before we get too far in, I decided to take a few maps of the area so we can compare each 100 days. Next though, I feel like we're lacking in farms, so I'm going to put together a quick little shelter and go find me some new friends. Welcome to your new home. I just built it. It's brand new, looking fresh. And uh, don't worry, I'll get you a friend. Uh, for now, I'm going to call you Bruce, all right? Bruce. Yes, meet Bruce. You guys are going to be best of friends, slash maybe a little bit more than that. We got Bruce and we got Natalie, or Nat for short. Your guys' eyes are looking a little bit scuffed. I don't know if you know about that. Anyway, uh, Bruce and Nat, get acquainted. Uh, you had a baby. You guys really don't mess around, do you? Just straight into the action. All right, well, enjoy life. I also made a pen. This one's a lot less glamorous. And these chickens, <laughs> they won't be getting named. Bear with me on this one. I never really build circles in Minecraft, like, ever. But I want to try and build a few farms next to each other, like carrots and weed, etc. That actually look somewhat nice. Because I'm definitely usually that person that just builds really long straight line farms next to each other. Uh, but with this design, I can put a water bucket down in the center. And I'll harvest all of them at the same time. Alright, I think that's a pretty successful looking farm. I definitely need a few more carrots to finish it off. But, uh, nice. The morning of day 21, it's beautiful out, sunny, clear blue skies. So me and Steve are going to set off on an adventure. I want to try and get a bunch more loot, hopefully some name tags and maybe some pyramids. I haven't even seen a desert in this world yet. That was terrifying. What? I don't know how one, the horse survived. Or me. Yeah, so that was a little scuffed. But honestly, that was only the beginning of this nightmare. Protect me, girl lamb. <laughs> What? There's a witch! There's a- Get me out of here! This place is horrible! Oh my god, she's poisoned me. Work, Steve. Alright, they've hit me again. There's somebody with diamond armor over there? Uh, no, Steve is- Steve is poisoned. Steve is poisoned. I'm out. Bye. Uh, get me out of this trash hole! Oh, what? You think you can potion me from over there? Not a chance, bro. Not a chance. Steve? Steve? No, I hear him. Steve! Steve, eat. Yes. Full health, Steve is back. Alright, everybody get up. Yep, you've got a visitor. I've been through hell to get here. Get up. i got two bones. Doggo, you want to be my friend? I need all the protection I can get. Doggo. <gasps> Second bone! Doggo! Alright, Logan, come here. Your your name is Logan. Remember that, because I might forget. You know what? You can have a steak for being our, our first doggo friend. While Cody was out there risking lives, I started building a couple villager cabins. We haven't found any yet, but when I find some zombie villagers, I'll be ready to cure them and give them a new home. Alright, Steve. We must push further north while well, the sun is still up in our favor. Logan, you're in a ravine watching Judy. Like that cave right there. You're supposed to shout that out. Where, where's the comms, Logan? Where's those comms, fam? What's that ravine doing? Honestly. What? There's another one! Logan, again! Where's the comms? Even with Logan failing at his new job, we continued our journey, and we actually found an intact, afloat shipwreck, which I thought was pretty damn awesome. It also had some decent loot inside. It had a diamond, some bamboo, even had frostwalker boots, which I thought could be useful. Now, back to that nightmare I was having. Please no creepers. Please no ravines. Literally a ravine, as I called it. Oh. Terrifying. Oh, what? No, 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 no. Trident guy, trident guy, get out of here. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Run. Leave, doggo. Leave. Doggo, you can, don't, don't be swimming underwater, fam. He can, he doesn't have lungs. You can't compete with that. Somehow, without losing any of the boys, I managed to fight back all of those mobs. But at this point, we're at the edge of an ocean. So I left Steve and Logan safely on their own little island by themselves, and I went off alone, adventuring across land and sea in search of loot. The main goal was to find our first pyramid or temple, and hopefully some name tags, because we've made a lot of new friends recently. Now, I was out for many days and nights, non-stop searching, and I found a lot of good loot. More than I could fit in this video. But I kid you not, during this adventure, I found 10 villages, 4 shipwrecks, 
three buried treasure chests, four nether portals, nine ravines, and a couple of pillager outposts without finding a single desert or name tag. Back at camp, after only a couple enchantments, I got the perfect four tune three diamond pickaxe, which was super exciting. So I headed down to the mines to test it out. And after just two veins, I walked away with 27 diamonds. After four days on the road and thousands of blocks traveled, I decided to start heading back the long way to our boys, Steve and Logan, in case I found something along the way. And sure enough, just a few biomes over, I managed to find a huge desert, and it even had our very first pyramid. So I MLG down like a professional, and raided the very decent loot, had a few diamonds and a gapple. No name tags though, unfortunately. So with that, I got back on the road, and I eventually reunited with our boys Steve and Logan for the final stretch of the trip home, where I actually met some old doggos. I gave them all the bones I'd collected on the journey so far, and I welcomed them to the wolf pack. Made sure they knew who was the top dog though, by giving Logan a gold chain. What is that? What are these beautiful campfires? Does that mean home? It's been so many days and nights. Hi, Lilith. It's been so long. Look, meet Logan and the gang that is still yet to be named. Hello, gang. Acacia saplings. Two brewing stands. Yay! One, two, three bees nests. Oh my god! Mending fishing rod. <gasps> which you do love to fish. I do, and it's mending. And bamboo. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. just add it to the garden. I don't know. I, I, I just bought it because I didn't have it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yay! Our next mission was the nether, which was well overdue. But first we needed better gear. So over the next few days, we enchanted a lot. By night, we'd go mining. At day, we'd breed our animals and enchant our gear over and over. We both had terrible luck. Countless band of arthropod swords were disenchanted. But eventually, we at least had Proc 4 on most armor and a decent bow each. Midday on day 35, and it is finally nether portal time. But I have a design in mind, so I need to go find a heap of obsidian first. I can't make the full design yet. I need some nether blocks for that, so I'll leave it for a little bit later. We just kind of want to get in there and find the fortress first, and then we'll deal with the cool portal design later on. It was pretty obvious the second we got in, this wasn't going to be an easy nether. There was lava, cliff drops in every direction. Basalt biomes are super dangerous to spawn in. But nonetheless, we got to work. We started bridging across everything. We started tunneling through everything in our way. We're looking for one thing, and that was the fortress. I had a couple close calls with the heated locals. One time, with my back to lava, one jumped me and broke my shield in a couple hits. I didn't exactly make a great first impression on the locals either, unfortunately. A whole army of pigmen and a ghast were chasing me around the wastes. Lucky I played a ton of cod zombies in my time and managed to train them all around until I was able to pillar up. I then tried explaining to them it was a big misunderstanding, but they really weren't having a bar of it. It had already been five days and we bridged in three different directions. When we followed the sound of a magma cube in a random little cave and we finally found the fortress. We're in. Oh my god, first one gives me a blaze rod, let's go. Priority number one is netherwort. Oh, hello, friends. We also need you guys to power all of our, our brewing stands so we can make all the potions, like strength and regen, fireproof. I found netherwort already, Lilith. let's go. This nether fortress is actually being so nice, giving us all the stuff straight off the bat. I mean, it took us five days to find it, but hey. Oh my god, all right. Another diamond horse armor. Bro, I just found six diamonds. What? That's so nice. Oh my god. After looting the place, we needed one last thing. Blaze rods. And lots of them. So we found the spawner before heading home. I finally, after many attempts, got the last piece of proc 4 armor I needed to complete my set. And then for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to creeper test it later that night. At least now I know we can survive creeper blasts. There have been way too much going on. Adventuring through the nether, creeper hugging, we needed to relax. So for a couple days, I built another villager cabin and Cody did some farming. During the night, I went searching for zombie villagers in need of rescuing. And after a couple days, I found one. I slowly led him back to the village, gave him a potion of weakness and a gapple to bring him back to life. It wasn't entirely out of the goodness of my heart though. I needed mending. So for the next few days, I eventually encouraged him to become a librarian. Zombie villagers generally take a while to find, but this guy walked right up to us in broad daylight. It was a little sketch to try and trap him without burning. But eventually we got him all cured up and moved into one of the cabins. I made us a nice picnic. The sun's setting on uh, day 50. We have some uh, pumpkin pie. We have a cake to eat, even though 
I'm not hungry and neither are you, but we have a cake. And there's some drinks, some beverages. I, I brewed myself, I even got the achievement. And, and there's cookies. And we can just chill here and watch the sunset on day 50. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my god, you guys are never leaving. You guys are gonna be best friends forever. His dirt blocks here and everything. Oh my god, yes. You should definitely stare him in the eyes because he can't do anything. Hey buddy, we're gonna be best friends forever. I'm gonna name you. You're gonna be Kurt. And you make Kurt needed more friends though. Yes, we have Flower Guy! Oh my god. <laughs> yes! For the next few days, we worked on our villagers, infecting them and then curing them again so they'd give us better trades. Yeah, that's more like it. Too cold. You love to see it. Now that we have enough villagers, I can finally afford name tags for our friends. We got our original boys, Steve and Hank, and then we got uh, Tony. And of course, we got our best boy, Logan. Here, have a steak, my boy. I got you guys name tags. Got Bruce and Nat right here. So Bruce, bam, and Nat. You guys, you guys live together under here for as long as you guys want, slash forever. Forever. All right, we've got Kurt and we have John. This guy's Kurt, and then we have John. With that finally done, I upgraded all of my armor and chance to include amending and headed into the nether for some XP, as well as a bit of piglin trading. I figured I may as well start working on some pearls. This piggy though had other plans. After a stack and a half of gold, I walked away with only two pearls. Uh, so, bit of bad news guys. Uh, I was away in the nether for a couple days, and uh, apparently it rained. And we lost John. K Kurt's fine. I built Kurt a house. I just totally forgot the necessity of the house. Uh, for John. So in John's honor, me and Steve headed out on another adventure on the hunt for more enderballs. It wasn't super successful, but we got a couple at least. We just got the best, most bust villager trades. This guy will sell us emeralds for one book each, and this guy will sell us bookshelves for the price of one emerald. And if you break down a bookshelf, you get three books. That is huge stonks. On day 59, some of the villagers spawned a cat. I love cats. So we went fishing straight away, caught some fishies, and made that little kitty my friend. I headed back to the nether, this time with a lot more gold, and this guy was a lot more cooperative. After a few days and a couple gas attacks, I had 15 endy balls. So Lilith and I spent the next couple days doing the final prep for the end, enchanting potions and villager stocks. Morning of day 64, me and Lilith are stacked, we got full diamond armor, all enchanted, we got all the potions we could ever need, we got golden apples, we got the eyes of ender, all of our stuff's pretty stacked. Now it's just a long journey to find out where this ender portal is, starting with this throw. This away. The trip wasn't very far at all. We found a desert nearby with a really cute village, a pyramid, another pillager outpost, and it even had the end stronghold, all within a couple hundred blocks. <laughs> We already found it. Wow. All right, what? let's get rid of this. That was the easiest portal I've ever found. Excuse me? I could waste hours looking for it sometimes. That was amazing. Every time I've gone, we've wasted hours. <laughs> Cheers. Both at the same time? Uh, you first. You first. Just right. in case it's gone. We're on the edge, but we're good. Now I know you guys have never seen an Ender Dragon fight before in your lives, but the first stage is taking out these crystals on these towers with, to be honest, some pretty impressive bow shots. I'm pretty accurate after all of these phantom snipes in this world. Once they were taken out, it was easy street. Got underneath the dragon, took the sword to him, and started just ripping at the health. No problems at all. Oh my god, my slow falling ran out just the last second, and I switched to a glass bottle instead of... Uh oh. Enderman, this is not the time, bro. I was looking at my inventory. Don't sneak up on me like that. Okay, that was a little bit sketch, but it's fine. We potioned up and got back in. Get her, Lil. Go off. Get him. Get an MLG bucket with a slow fall. <laughs> <laughs> After both surviving some pretty gnarly hits from the Ender Dragon, we teamed up using our newfound bow skills, and with the final swing of the sword, we took out the Ender Dragon in hardcore Minecraft. You cracked I'm level 50. 50. Nice one. I came in here level four. <laughs> <laughs> I of course grabbed our baby dragon egg before we both jumped in the portal together, letting those credits roll, which returned us back home to where we had no bed because we still haven't slept in this world whatsoever. I put up our new baby dragon egg at the enchantment table, thought that was the best place for it, before heading back to go pick up our boys, Steve and Hank. 
Oh, and they made another baby. <laughs> Hi, bud. Wait, we have four in here. Who's this guy? Uh, I bred him before we left in case we lost the horses. Whoa. Steve, I would never assume that we were going to lose you. I mean, we're right or die to the end, bro. Next mission, we are ready for the nether on it. day 69. We're going to go get a ton of blackstone because I want to make this portal look awesome. This surprisingly took two whole days. I could never find a big enough vein of blackstone, but eventually I filled my entire inventory with it and headed back to start our new project. Now, this is entirely new to me. I've never attempted to make a cool portal design before, especially not one this big. But I saw a repost, I think on Instagram. Apologies, I forgot who posted it, but it was a really cool idea. And I thought I'd make my own design of it. I think it'll fit in really, really well with my overall idea I have for this area. Probably won't be able to get my full area design finished in this 100 days. But the portal design is going to be like the centerpiece of that idea. And I think it turned out really, really well. It is a giant... Fully blackstone sword piercing through from the top through to the bottom of the archway in the center of our area. And I think it looks sick. I love it. Now that we've finished that, it is finally time to build the boys a proper stable. We're definitely going to have to go bigger this time because for some reason we have four horses between the two of us. Not sure how that happened, but we're, we're going bigger. It's probably not going to be too extravagant, but definitely better than the current living situation because... I don't even know how all four of them fit in there, if I'm going to be honest. But this one's going to be a little nicer. It's going to have some hay in there for them. A couple of cauldrons with some water, as well as some flowers. I, I think Steve lacks the new place. Next, I guess, is finally these guys. What to do with you guys? I didn't want to spend too long on the cows, so I just gave them a bigger, much nicer pen with a cute little pond in it, a couple of trees for some shade, and some flowers. On the other side of camp... I was expanding my village, curing more zombies, breeding them, and building them more homes. This is the condo for two, and this is the condo for one. Our Fletcher man's already moved in. It comes complete with interior and a jazzy new fireplace. Although he doesn't appreciate Cody taking a room on his couch. Hey Steve, you ready to go on another adventure? We're going to the end, bud. We're totally not making you obsolete with wings. I swear we'll still go on adventures. Hank, this is probably the last time you're ever going to see me. Yeah, honestly, probably same. I'm just kidding. Sort of. Please no glitch. What? I'm in a tree? I mean, I'm not off the edge, but I'm in a tree. Where's the platform? This could take 10 minutes. Or this could take 4 hours. I'm terrified if it's going to take 4 hours. Surprisingly, after just 15 minutes, I found one. I can't see a, I can't see a boat. Oh my god, there's a second one? Oh my god, I'm so keen. Please have a boat. Please, a boat. I think, is that, I think that's a boat. It's a boat. Confirmed boat. Screw that one. Come in here. Come, 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 come. Pinky finger of steel. Let's go. I made it. Yeah. Look at that horrible bridge. You're kidding. You're kidding. There's four within my render distance. Wait, what? I thought you were saying because, like, you still hadn't bridged across. No, no, no. Look, there's you. That's the giant one with the boat. I can't see if, like, top left, if that's going to generate more. That one. And then that's a whole separate one. That is four. What? That's crazy. What? I mess around just straight in. Don't even worry about the ones on the top. Eat this guy. What projectiles, mate? You're trash. Get out of here. Let's go. Give me it. Yeah, we did it. Now that I could fly, I set off in search of another Elytra for Lily. And after just a couple hundred blocks, I managed to find another one. This is easily the best end realm I've ever had. I fought off the shulkers, grabbed the wings and the dragon head before heading back home with Lilith and all our new loot. I put up our new dragon heads at the front door just for show and we decided to name them Pete and Stan. Before we could start using our elytras, we needed unbreaking from our villagers. In the process, Cody thought it'd be a good idea to punch a villager by accident, which they weren't exactly happy about. 38 emeralds? So, it took a couple days to convince them, but we eventually got the price down and enchanted our elytra. The other key ingredient we need is rockets, and lots of them. So the next project I'm going to be working on is a gunpowder farm. I've been delaying building it for a little while, but it is one of my favorite farms to build, because not only can you get a ton of rockets from it, you can build a lot of TNT. 
This, by the way, isn't my design. I didn't come up with the creeper farm itself. I'm actually following a tutorial by Shulkercraft. I'll link it in the description if you guys want to build it in your own worlds. Or just search creeper farm on YouTube. It comes up first every time because the dude's a genius. I did, however, get slightly bored building it because it took me a couple of days. And I decided to take a random pot shot. And I hit it. All right, show us in your crypt. Oh okay. my god, it looks fantastic. Cody. I love Dark Oak. God, this looks cool. Welcome to the re-education center. Ah, yes, I love re-education centers. Now, there's not really anything inside because I wasn't sure how we were going to do this. As I was going to say, there's nothing inside because it's a re-education center and I didn't know what to put in here, but please come in and have a look. Oh, I actually liked this stripped... Is it oak? Regular oak. Wow, I like it. And I made all the lanterns soul lanterns because we're taking their souls. Lily's village was coming along great. My creeper farm, it was getting there. It requires a ton of resources, so it's taking me an extra few days than I expected. Especially trapdoors. Side note, why are they so expensive? I used all of the wood we already had. Plus, I think I spent a whole day cutting down wood, and then I used all of that as well, just to fill all of the platforms with trapdoors. It took a hot minute, but we got there eventually. As the sun is setting on day 91, I'm pretty sure, 90% sure, that it is all set up. There we go. All the water is working. The uh, roof is on. It is all nice and dark. We might be able to see a few spawn. It'll spawn both creepers and spiders. It'll push them away. You can see a couple down the bottom there. They'll eventually make their way on the bottom platform into the magma. They'll burn up. And then we're going to make a dropper system underneath that magma to uh, pick up whatever drops. Primarily being the gunpowder for these beautiful wings I have. I could make this faster if I build an AFK platform, like way above the tower, but I might leave that for 200 days. This should do for now. Now it is day 92. It is getting super close to the end, but I have one more project, one last mission I want to try and get done, and that is to build the first villager house on this side of the mountain. I think I only have time left to build one, but I definitely want to expand this area in the future, add a bunch more villager houses around our horse stables, our farms, and our other animals, just so we have a bunch of free roaming villages in that area. I think that'd look really nice. It's kind of like stage two of my overall idea, that aesthetic I was going for. This house, I'm definitely going to go all out though, especially with the interior. I'm just going to load it up. It's going to look really nice. It's going to be for our mending villager. I think he's going to be the one that deserves to move in this new area first. Probably going to end up with a nicer house than what we currently have, so I might have to upgrade that next. Can confirm the interior is way nicer than our current place. He's got his own enchantment table, bamboo pot, which is super cute. Didn't even know he could do that. He's got his own fireplace, which I think looks really, really cool. He's just got a bunch of expensive items, which is kind of funny considering we don't have that much resources. For example, he's got a jukebox. We don't have CDs for it, but I made him one anyway. While Cody was starting his village, I added a tower to my superior village. Originally occupied by local tower dweller Frank, but he's off at the ranch, so his replacement, Frank, will be taking over his duties soon. Watching the local wildlife in the field and ringing the bell when there's trouble. We had a few more days, so we decided we'd clean up the nearby area. We moved the sheep pen just over to the right out of the way of the villager's house, then connected everything with a big pathway with a bunch of flowers, some scattered stone everywhere, which I thought just brought the whole area together and made it look really nice. Day 98, we've got most of the projects done that I want to do in this 100 days. Honestly, maybe even all the ones I set off to do at the very start, and then we just added some more as we went along. Just especially for this area, we just added more and more pretty things but we've got one final thing left and that is to fill up the day 100 maps to see what this world looks like compared to where we got the maps at the very start and what it looks like at the end my bad i totally forgot to lock the maps at the start so when i picked them up i rewrote them by accident which is kind of pain but it's okay i've got a recording of them we know what they look like and i've locked the day 100 maps so we can compare those ones from now on it's day 100 bam there it is oh, wait when does it become day 100, technically? I can see the sun. It's fully risen. You can't tell me it's not day 100 yet. Not day 100. All right, well, I guess it's day 99, guys. Sorry, fake news. There's day 100. <laughs> well, oh, we made it. 100 days. Hardcore with Minecraft. And we're, we're, st we're still here. Not only that, but today of all days, a baby pigman riding a chicken casually made its way through our village. So for safekeeping, we brought them inside and decided to name them Hope. On that note, I'm pretty sure we've named everything in our entire area except our golem. So if you guys have a good name for our golem, let me know in the comment section and I'll pick one for the 200 days video. 
And that is 100 days in hardcore Minecraft Survivor, both Luf and myself. It was so much fun putting this video together for you guys. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to click that like button and the subscribe button for 200 days coming soon to the channel. Also, if you guys are interested, I'm considering streaming a similar series over on my Twitch, which is linked down below. Feel free to check out that if you would like. And other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll live stream. Till then, adios.